Twenty seven. The city of Frankfurt has decided we don't need no Roger Waters. An icon of rock music and a symbol of the end of the Cold War. He's among the top grossing musicians in the world, a co-founder of Pink Floyd, one of the most influential and popular rock bands in musical history. His music has been recognized as a unifying, driving force of democratic ideas against the terror of communist authoritarianism. And yet, the city of Frankfurt has cancelled Waters' concert on allegations of anti-Semitism. How did it come to this? What is the reason for this shift? What does the decision to cancel the concert mean for Frankfurt? And are the mighty always bound to fall? Let's find out. I'm Boris Siromakov. Welcome to Frankfurt English News. The story starts back in 1963 in the halls of the London Polytechnic at Regent Street. It is there where young Roger Waters met Nick Mason and together they started a band that would achieve world fame as Pink Floyd. From the roots of a small psychedelic rock band, over 22 years grew a massive, hyper-influential band that under the leadership of Roger Waters was turning into a strong political weapon. There are two albums that come to mind when we're talking about the growing international political influence of Pink Floyd. Animals and The Wall. Animals is loosely based on George Orwell's Animal Farm, with its depictions of different classes of society as different animals. The Wall's story follows a character that is based on the childhood of Roger Waters himself, who overcomes his life struggles to tear down a wall and become a caring person. Even if they weren't necessarily created for political reasons, the themes arching in these albums were in line with the public opinion in the late years of the Cold War, and they seemed to convey messages of democracy that would, quite literally, tear a wall down in Berlin. Pink Floyd's influence cannot be overstated, especially when we talk about the European countries and the former USSR. They were officially banned, of course, but their messages of freedom and protest inspired a whole generation and catalyzed the revolutionary ideas of democracy that would overthrow communist regimes. Pink Floyd had everything in the early 80s. They were world famous, they were top in the charts, and they sold millions of albums. What could possibly go wrong? Ego. At the turn of 1984, a rivalry had established itself within Pink Floyd's ranks between two of its driving forces, Roger Waters and David Gilmour. Both of them had released solo albums and tension within the band was rising because of different views of the creative direction in which the band was headed. The result of rising tensions was that in 1985, Roger Waters was dead set that Pink Floyd should call it quits. David Gilmour had another idea, and what followed was a three-year lawsuit after which Waters finally agreed to allow Pink Floyd to keep using the band name in exchange for the exclusive rights on The Wall and The Animal's Inflatable Pig. Note the pig, it's gonna play a pivotal role in the future of Roger Waters. Pink Floyd continued their rise to the rock and roll halls of legends and so did Waters as a solo artist. One of the strongest and most important examples of how influential his legacy is, however, was the concert that was held in Berlin in July 1990, just eight months after the Berlin Wall had fallen. The concert took place between Potsdamer Platz and the Brandenburg Gate and had a reported attendance of 200,000 people, although some estimates point to the figure of 400,000 and was televised to over 1 billion viewers. The Wall concert included musicians Johnny Mitchell, Van Morrison, Cindy Lauper, Brian Adams, Scorpions and Shanita Connor, as well as an East German Symphony Orchestra and Choir, a Soviet marching band and a pair of US military helicopters. The show was absolutely massive. It only proves the influence that Roger Waters and Pink Floyd had over political processes way above music and art. The songs of protests and freedom were heard by the audience. Their lyrics screamed in exaltation as the big enemy was falling, beaten. It was a victory of the unrelenting human spirit. This was the brightest night for Roger Waters, and what followed is a descent into darkness. Fast forward, the year is 2017. Contrary to popular belief in the beginning of the 90s, the end of history had not come, and economical and political shifts had drawn the Western world into a number of wars and caused a few financial disasters. In fact, the new world, with all the freedom and democracy it had promised, looked even more terrifying than the old because of the thick veil of the unknown spreading over the future. 
Surely the unifying force of music, with the messages of solidarity and togetherness, could console and lead people to greater understanding, right? And now Waters is the subject of a new movie by best-selling author and filmmaker Ian Halperin. The documentary film is called Wish You Weren't Here. Being the son of a Holocaust survivor, I, I, I almost fell off my chair that somebody was able to be out on tour and during his tour dress up in a Nazi uniform and have pigs floating around with the Star of David emblazoned on it. Wait, how did we get from this to this? I'm hoping that all the corporate sponsors wake up and decide to take action against this man who is perpetrating hatred toward the state of Israel and the Jewish people. The reason is as simple as Waters' opinion on the state of Israel. But this is where simplicity ends. Let's try to break down everything that has been said in order to understand the conflict better. Roger Waters first saw the Israeli West Bank barrier in 2006. He was scheduled to perform in Tel Aviv, but moved his concert to Nev Shalom, a city where people from both sides of the conflict live together peacefully. A few years later, Waters wrote a piece for The Guardian called Tear Down This Israeli Wall, in which he openly expressed his support for the BDS movement. According to their website, BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, Sanctions, and is a, I quote, Palestinian-led movement for freedom, justice, and equality. BDS upholds the simple principle that Palestinians are entitled to the same rights as the rest of humanity, end quote. It aims, as many of you know, to bring non-violent economic pressure to bear on Israel to force an end to its violations, an end to occupation and apartheid, an end to the denial of Palestinians' right to return, and an end to Palestinian citizens of Israel being required to live as second-class citizens, discriminated against on racial grounds and subject to different laws than their Jewish compatriots. I think now is the best time to introduce the rivals of the BDS movement. The Anti-Defamation League, or ADL, is a US-based international non-government organization that specializes in civil rights law. It was established in 1913 and was formerly known as the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith. According to their website, they are, I quote, the leading anti-hate organization in the world, end quote, and their, quote, timeless mission is to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment to all. End quote. The ADL have called the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, I quote, an international campaign aimed at delegitimizing and pressuring Israel through the diplomatic, financial, professional, academic and cultural isolation of Israel, Israeli individuals, Israeli institutions and, increasingly, Jews who support Israel's right to exist. Before we go any further, I'd like to be perfectly clear that we're not going to shift this story into explaining, analyzing, and ultimately taking sides in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Our goal is to understand why Roger Waters is being labeled anti-Semitic, and to do so, we'll first define anti-Semitism. The working definition of anti-Semitism has been created by IHRA, which stands for International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Their definition is widely accepted and is as follows, I quote, Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities." End quote. Because such definitions will always sound abstract and vague, the IHRA have provided a list of illustration examples of anti-Semitism. The list is quite exhaustive, and you can check it out in a link that I will leave in the description below, but for now, we can focus on one specific point on the list. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance recognizes, I quote, drawing comparisons of contemporary Israel policy to that of the Nazis, end quote, as anti-Semitism. And here is what happened in 2013. In an interview for Counterpunch magazine, Roger Waters claimed that regarding Israeli treatment of Palestinians, I quote, the parallels with what went on in the 30s in Germany are so crushingly obvious, end quote, and I quote, there were many people that pretended that the oppression of the Jews was not going on from 1933 until 1946. So this is not a new scenario, except that this time it's the Palestinian people being murdered." End quote. This interview caused massive backlash, and a reply from the ADL was quick to follow. I'm gonna go straight to quotes here. According to the Times of Israel, I quote, 
having previously defended Roger Waters from accusations of anti-Semitism, the Anti-Defamation League, or ADL, on Thursday reluctantly acknowledged that anti-Semitic conspiracy theories have seeped into the totality of the former Pink Floyd frontman's views." End quote. Previously, the ADL had defended Waters drawing the star of David on the famous inflatable pig he uses in his concerts by saying that, I quote, while we wish that Mr. Waters would have avoided using the star of David, we believe there is no anti-Semitic intent here, end quote. You would think that at this point, both sides of the argument would try to reach an understanding about where their views and ideas differ, but you couldn't be more wrong. This was just the beginning. In the following years, Waters urged other musicians to cancel their concerts in Israel and radicalized his position on the parallels between Israel's diplomacy and the Nazis. You know, the thing about propaganda, which, you know, which, which, again, you know, it's hard not to go back to Goebbels or to the 30s or whatever. You, you understand that the, the tactic is to tell the big lie as often as possible over and over and over and over again, and people believe it. On the other side, the Anti-Defamation League started assembling a list under the title of, I quote, Roger Waters in his own words, end quote, in which they collect, I quote, inflammatory and or anti-Semitic statements from Waters, end quote. What is more interesting is that the list isn't exhaustive. There is one interview that doesn't show there, an interview Roger Waters gave to Hamas-affiliated Muslim Brotherhood TV. The murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis last week was done with a technique invented by the IDF, by mm -hmm. the occupation forces. Mm -hmm. Israeli, the Israelis invented, let's kill people by kneeling on their necks and cutting off the blood supply of the carotid artery to the brain. Mm -hmm. That is an Israeli technique taught to the militarized police forces of the United States of America by Israeli experts, who the Americans have been flying over to the United States mm -hmm. to teach them how to murder the blacks, because they've seen how efficient the Israelis have been murdering Palestinians mm -hmm. in the occupied territories using those techniques. And they're proud of it. They're proud of it. The Israelis are proud of it. They go, hey, look how good we are at this. Mm -hmm. You can learn. Roger Waters explained his views on Joe Rogan's podcast, in which he analyzed why he is being labeled anti-Semitic. Did anyone have any kind of argument that they wanted to bring to you as for any justification of that? You mean from the Israelis? Yes. Side? No. That's why they call me anti-Semitic. That's why they label anyone who criticizes the apartheid policies of the state of Israel without criticizing the Jewish religion or any Jewish person I mean, the fact that a lot of the people who are in the government are Ju of the Jewish faith means that they can somehow feel they can conflate criticism of the apartheid policies with the general criticism of uh, an anti-Semitic criticism of the Jewish people or people who... Well, they... Nice try, fellas, but it won't wash. That's not what it is. And most of us who get labelled as anti-Semites are not. On the 24th of February, the magistrates of Frankfurt and Hessen announced that the planned Roger Waters concert on the 28th of May 2023 was cancelled because he was, I quote, one of the most prominent anti-Semites in the world, end quote. Another interesting story concerns the venue in which the concert was supposed to be held, Frankfurt's Festhalle behind me. This building has a grim history because after the pogrom night of 1938, 3,000 Jewish people from Frankfurt and the area were held here before being deported to concentration camps. The cancellation announcement came after an eventful February, which saw Polly Sampson, lyricist for Pink Floyd's later songs and wife of David Gilmour, tweet, I quote, Sadly, Roger Waters, you are anti-Semitic to your rotten core. Also a Putin apologist and a lion, thieving, hypocritical, tax-avoiding, lip-syncing, misogynistic, sick-with-envy megalomaniac. Enough of your nonsense, end quote. Gilmore quote tweeted her, adding, I quote, every word demonstrably true, end quote. Roger Waters replied, saying that he is, I quote, aware of the incendiary and wildly inaccurate comments made about him on Twitter by Polly Sampson, which he refutes entirely. He is currently taking advice as to his position, end quote. The cities of Hamburg, Köln, Berlin, and Munich also considered following Frankfurt in cancelling Waters' concerts. 
In the following weeks, The Guardian reported that Roger Waters had sought legal advice from the Hoka law firm and threatens legal action against cities cancelling his concerts. The Guardian reports a joint statement from Hoka and Waters' UK manager. I quote, These actions are unconstitutional, without justification, and based upon the false accusation that Roger Waters is anti-Semitic, which he is not. Mr. Waters believes that if this blatant attempt to silence him is left unchallenged, it could have serious, far-reaching consequences for artists and activists all over the world." End quote. It looks like a legal battle is the last thing on the City of Munich's agenda, because after Waters' announcement, city officials backed out of the idea to cancel the concert. Lawmakers said that they would, I quote, put up signs at the venue denouncing anti-Semitism, urging international cooperation in the fight against Jew hatred, and supporting Israel's right to exist. There will also be signs in support of Ukraine, end quote. However, Munich's mayor was very unhappy with the decision, saying that, I quote, I don't want him here, but we have to put up with it now, end quote. All of this back and forth action around the concerts and their cancellations begs another question. Allegations against Roger Waters on grounds of anti-Semitism are not news. In fact, they've been going on for the past 10 years. So why did the concerts have to be scheduled in order to be canceled? And why waste valuable taxpayer money for legal battles when all of this could have been avoided in the first place? In fact, the only thing that was in the news was Roger Waters' views on the Russian war in Ukraine. And that's not the most recent news either. Waters' views about the war in Ukraine have caused significant backlash, leading to his concerts being cancelled in Poland. Here's an excerpt of his address towards the United Nations Security Council. The invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation was illegal. I condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Also, the Russian invasion of Ukraine was not unprovoked. So I also condemn the provocateurs in the strongest possible terms. There, that's got that out of the way. What causes a person who was the symbol of freedom and democracy to support ideas such as these? And what do these ideas actually represent? Will they lead to making the world a better place? Or will they push society further down the path of aggression and conflict? I think the reason for these ideas lies deep within Roger Waters himself and the life he has lived. His art and activism flew under the banner of a massive, all-encompassing protest that for a significant amount of time looked like it was against the common enemy, so to speak. But with the fall of the USSR, the times changed, and so did the narrative. We no longer live in a black and white world, and the battle between good and evil has shifted to many smaller conflicts. But this massive, all-encompassing protest did not move on. And by painting the world black and white, and aiming to restore the worldview of a bipolar system, this protest is the sound of the division bell that is erecting walls much taller and harder to break down than any built in the past. If one isn't protesting this, what's going on now, I think I'd rather be dead. The sources that we use to create this video are all available in the description below. The German word of the day is Mawa, and it means wall. It is important that if you destroy a wall, you don't use the debris to build a new and taller one. Thank you for being with us. Good night and good luck.